Good afternoon. Can I say that again? Good afternoon. Oh, I'm Meryl Pinson, and I have the privilege of um, serving as the Executive Director of Library Services for the Board of Regents. And um, really, essentially, what that means is Galileo. And so, you know, it's really quite a privilege to work with um, Galileo. Um, it's because it's one of the things that serves the students and faculty and citizens across our state. And um, one of the things that I always say about Galileo is that everyone works for Galileo. Um, and um, everybody has a different role, but everyone works for Galileo. So I'm going to ask actually the Galileo staff if you would please raise your hand or stand where you are. Um, and if all of you want to stand, that would be okay too. But um, do, <laughs> um, these are the people that have been working very hard um, on, on helping us um, with this uh, work today. And, um, You'll get an opportunity to meet some of them as the program continues and um, to ask them questions or where things are so forth as you go forward. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the university system um, leadership. Uh, Chancellor Huckabee was not able to join us today, and, um, but Vice Chancellor um, Houston Davis will be joining us a little bit later today and we'll have a a time to share some of his thoughts with you as well, but I want to thank them um, for their support of this effort. I also want to thank our sponsors and partners for this event, um, McGraw-Hill Education, Lumen, OpenStax, uh, the California State System, University System Affordable Learning Solutions, and I do want to thank them because they have really contributed a lot to this program and to the work that we've been doing over this last year in Affordable Learning um, Georgia. So if we could give all of our sponsors and partners a big round of applause. I also want to do just a couple of little housekeeping things to tell you about. Um, on your program, you will see that we will leave here, uh, this building this evening, um, and go over to the beautiful new Special Collections um, Library here on campus. There will be buses that will take you there. We will meet those buses um, at the hotel desk entrance lobby, that door. That's where the buses will be. They will take you there and they will bring you back. Um, um, so I want you to be sure to, to know that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that in your program on the page that has the information about the hotel, there is information there on your Wi-Fi um, connections. And uh, while I'm talking about Wi-Fi, if I could ask you to silence your phones, um, and I hope Meryl did that too, but um, silence your phones, I um, would appreciate that um, as well. Um, one of the things, um, I guess I'll just give you a little quick background. The USG library community um, was asked really to take a leadership role in helping to provide more affordable textbooks as one of the strategies that the university system has been using to help ensure that Georgians um, complete college. Well, some of you will know that libraries um, have not bought textbooks. We have been like, oh no beg me if you want a textbook because textbooks cost a lot of money and would really eat up your, your budget. So really librarians didn't like to buy lots of textbooks. But libraries do a lot of things. We talk about business models, the roles of publishers, copyright, uh, this major shift from print to digital or print to electronic. We talk about open access. We talk about assessment. How do we ensure the success of students? Um, so these are all topics that we already have been working on and dealing with. And so the idea of sort of thinking about the textbook really wasn't so different. So, but if we started working on this project about a year ago, and then we thought, well, okay, well, what really is the textbook? You know, we say we want to talk about the textbook in the future. What really is the future of the textbook? What does it really look like? 
Um, what, is it this, what is this thing that we want to be more affordable? Uh, does it look like those textbooks that my 96-year-old dad had who won't let me throw them out? Um, does it look like a fancier version of with, you know, sort of fancy cover and, you know, it doesn't scratch and um, um, it's more attractive or does it have supportive media included in it? Is it available on your tablet? Just sort of what is it? And um, so does it tell you about what you know once you've read this textbook? Does it help you understand what you know? Um, so does it do any analytics? Is it a website? Is it a collection of licensed um, readings? Is it primary sources? Just what is this textbook? Is it open? Is it closed? Is it commercially produced? So we thought that one of the things that we would want to do would be to really have this conversation with the faculty and, uh, of the university system. What is it that we think the future of the textbook is? What is it? What does it look like? Um, so um, that's really the purpose of this, is to have that kind of conversation. It's not a new conversation. I'm sure that when people remove the chains from the books at the Bodleian Library, that was also something people were thinking about. But we want to continue to have this conversation. And so today we have a diverse group of speakers who will help us think about this. And um, so um, I'm looking forward to all of this, but the conversation about what this is. So one of the things that you have as an opportunity is to tell us what you think the future is. There's a little game, a little test in your, in your book that's sort of a, a high tech, really high tech predictor of what the future will be for the uh, textbook. And the winner will receive a prize, and it will be announced later. And you, it says in your program, you have until 5 p.m. today to turn it in, but we'll have um, the opportunity for you to turn your results in um, tonight at the reception as well. So if you don't get it turned in today, you can do it uh, at, um, uh, this afternoon. You can turn it in. Um, tonight at the, at the reception. But at this point, um, I um, won't take a lot of long, a time to really introduce our speakers. They are all extremely accomplished, and um, we all are at a university, and mostly we can read. So, um, but I will um, just briefly welcome our speakers. So first, I'd like to welcome Dr. James Cook, who is the President Emeritus of Old Dominion University. So now, he is a retired college president, but I will tell you this, that when I was asking him about his work and efforts, the sparkle in his eye didn't come from the things about being the president. It came about the work that he's doing as an economist. And one of the things that he's working on as an economist is um, he's serving as an expert uh, sort of witness, I guess you would say, in the Cengage uh, Gale, librarians will know all of this, engage Gale bankruptcy um, efforts. And so I thought that was pretty cool, and he thinks it's pretty cool too. He's excited about it. But we're going to welcome him to come and talk about the um, sort of the status of where the textbook world is today. 